We are in the midst of a media revolution. Never before have so many entertainment alternatives been available. From motion pictures to television, from CDs to video games, from the internet to DVDs, all are in tremendous competition, not only for our time and money, but also for our affections. When watching a movie, most people believe they're simply being entertained. Likewise, when they hear the news, they believe they're simply getting the facts. However, nothing could be further from the truth. All communication involves the persuasive transfer of ideas, and when technology is added to the mix, an entire system of manipulative techniques are made available to those who control the process. Just what effect is all this media having on society? Some are pointing a finger at the entertainment industry, blaming them for a plethora of cultural problems. Many agree that easier access to violent and sexually explicit material is changing the moral landscape of our nation. Parents are especially concerned about their children and how they are being influenced by this media onslaught. Are we, in fact, being entertained to death? The Motion Picture Association of America, which has the rating system with which we're all familiar, the, the R, PG-13, G, and so forth, is really an industry operation run and funded by film studios to get you to go through the door of as many theaters as possible. The MPAA is a very strong organization that studios have a relationship with. Directors, producers, the studio heads, they go to the MPAA and actually talk and dialogue and negotiate about the ratings that they want for their films. This happened in Titanic. James Cameron went to them and said, look, I've got an expensive picture. I've invested a lot of money into it. I can't afford to lose the money, so I need to have a PG-13. Problem was, he had some R-rated material in this movie, and so they had to negotiate to give him that PG-13. This was important for him to make the money back on the picture, and of course it went on to become the most popular movie of all time. PG-13 film means any age can buy a ticket. So we had seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds going to see Titanic three, four, five, ten times to see this three-hour movie because they could. A lot of parents brought children under 13 thinking this is a movie about the Titanic, about the ship. It's going to have some history to it. They were shocked when they got in there and found out that there was nudity, uh, when the girl was posing nude and being drawn, that there was a sexual situation in the back of a car that implied that two teenagers had sex. There was language all the way through this film, so there were a lot of elements in this movie that truly really weren't even for 13-year-olds. But a lot of parents didn't realize that. So the PG-13 rating was a lenient rating that signaled it's also okay to bring kids if you want to. This confuses parents. What's okay, what's not okay, what elements are in a PG-13 film. This is the problem with this rating system. Also, the MPAA ratings are, are pretty much useless for a Christian to use as a guide to film consumption because while they may describe visual or, or sound images, they talk nothing about worldview. You could go to a film that maybe has a G rating in terms of its images, it would have a worldview or a message that would be very much anti-God, very much in favor of some uh, uh, belief system that was in, in direct violation of everything Christians believe and hold dear. The R rating was originally designed to restrict children under 17 years of age from gaining entrance into a theater unless accompanied by a parent. Profit-oriented theater owners, however, are not required to uphold this rule. 80% of all children under 17 in the U.S. have had no trouble at all getting into R-rated films. A recent study by the New York Times found that children as young as 10 years old were frequenting R-rated films on a regular basis, despite the fact that these films routinely have scenes of extreme violence, sexuality, nudity, and profanity. While the average movie-going adult sees only six films a year, the average teenager attends at least 50, with the vast majority of these films being R-rated. Playing on a teenager's desire to see something forbidden, and without any regard for consequence, Hollywood studios continue to produce R-rated films containing graphic sex and violence, specifically for the youth market. You know, the, the purpose, the job of the artist in one sense is to push the boundaries. And the job of the conservative, you know, reactionary forces is to say you've gone too far. 
R-rated films are being marketed and targeted more than ever before to teenagers under 17. In fact, in most cases to kids 12 through 16 because they know they will come. These days, adolescents and teens view any movie in most theaters as fair game. I mean, mini malls, multiplexes, they've changed the way we go to movies and they make most R-rated films available to whomever can walk in and sit down. No wonder kids are assuming they can get in to see R-rated movies. No one is really keeping it or monitoring the law and making sure that it applies. Kids are being actually lured in. Sex is being sold to teens on an everyday basis. Today's echo boomers are seeing more sex, more violence, more R-rated movies than ever before. Directors like Warren Zide, who was one of the producers of American Pie, actually made this statement. He said, we really feel like some of the funniest things that happen in high school are R-rated, and we felt like the marketplace was shifting and that the audience wanted an R-rated picture. In other words, what he's saying is, kids, his audience, wanted an R-rated picture, not necessarily the parents. That audience is our children under 17. And once again, parents' concerns uh, are nowhere in the decision. Their concerns about what their kids should see aren't even taken into account. Hollywood is setting a standard, and they're telling us, they're telling you as an adult, they're telling your children, they're telling your teenagers how they should and shouldn't act. And they're saying it's norm. They're saying it's a reflection of society. But whose society? Whose standards?